business is to approve the minutes. Madam Chairman, I move that the minutes be approved as presented. Second. All in favor? Aye. Very good. All right, health department. It's Gary. Thank you. You know how these stools are. Yes. <laughs> it keeps getting upside down. It gets scanned up. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, I forgot your. Well, it turns the other way. I was going to say, if you still need it, I can get it off of this. No, I, I'll print you one. I just forgot to give it oh, to you. Right. Yeah, does anybody know how to make our reports be right yeah. set up? They're all upside down. <laughs> uh oh. Megan scanned it in upside down, I guess. You know how to turn them back around? I don't know. I was trying to look for the. Yeah, I don't see a way to flip it. Yeah, you'd think there'd be some little buttons on the side, but they're not really going to Now, usually there's a square, which is to try to find a rotate button. That's what I was looking for, rotate. Yeah. Come on, we're some smart people. We could sure figure this out. Don't bet on that. <laughs> Anybody here from the Board of Education? <laughs> <laughs> Let me play with this one a second. Anybody watching the tape even? <laughs> <laughs> come down and help us. Yeah. Yeah, if anybody from OIT is watching, feel free to come down and rescue us. But in the meantime, we're going to let you go ahead and get started with the report. Well, you just tell us. Okay. There you go. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Technology. Um, okay, good evening. I bring to you the Health Department report for January. Um, and just a couple of things I want to highlight. So we um, did February 1st, we had our big community uh, baby shower. We talked about that a little bit in the last meeting that we knew it was coming. Well, now we've had it. Um, had a great turnout. It happened to be the week that we had the bad floods and then the snow. So our overflow parking at Patterson, which is normally uh, where we kind of have people, uh, was very muddy and unparkable. So I feel like we might have even been able to uh, service a few more people if parking hadn't been an issue with the weather and what. Uh, but we serviced 477 families came through that day. Um, we offered 10 different educational shops for them to attend and there were 48 community service vendors there. So 48 different people who offered services for our new families in the community, connecting people. We know through our community health needs assessment every year that Rutherford County is very blessed with a lot of services and a lot of things that are offered, but people often don't know how to connect to them or how to what's available or how to be referred to it. <clears throat> So that's one of the main purposes for the community baby shower is letting these new families know uh, what kind of services are available for them out there. And we had the 10 classes, 250 volunteers, 48 agencies with information. In the classes we taught things like uh, safe sleep, which is really, really important. The baby for its first year should be on its back, alone in its own crib with no other um, items in the crib so we talked a lot about that we talked a lot about breastfeeding we had a whole class about that and um, how to go back to work and how to do we figure it out <laughs> yeah if you okay look at the second icon on the bottom once you get it up on the left and it says turn the page upside down there you go okay wait a minute thank you sir yes sir <laughs> sorry <laughs> upside down did you get it the second icon on the left. On the left? Yeah, right there. Did you go over there? Practice it now. Did you go over there? I did it. We will know next time. Well, no, we won't. We're going to forget. We'll forget about the next time. I can never do technology twice in a row. So, anyways, I wanted to tell you about a little bit about that yes. project that we were doing. <laughs> Um, we did another one of the poverty simulations at Rocky Fort Elementary this time is where we did that one on January 30th. If you remember what that is, that's just where we set up um, in a school or a facility and we, it's many community partners come together and uh, we put scenarios together for um, participants to go through. So we have um, 
teachers, um, government workers, elected officials, um, different people who will go through these poverty uh, simulations. And basically, you're given kind of life cards. And um, it tells you what you need to accomplish in the day. And then you have to go to the different um, points within the simulation to see some of the challenges that people run into. Um, and it kind of helps build empathy and understanding for uh, the struggles that some of our residents have when utilizing some of our services. Um, so it's always a good, good uh, project to do. We continue to have the English as a Second Language classes, as, classes on Wednesday and Friday in the Smyrna site, uh, our Smyrna Health Department. That's been very well. Uh, we had it in one classroom, and now it's spread to four classrooms because we had such a, a turnout. And we do that with uh, uh, several community agencies. Uh, we just kind of offer up the space and help facilitate it and refer to it, of course, because we uh, learn in, run into a lot of people that English is their second language um, through our community projects and through our patients. Um, you'll start to see some uh, good increases come back to our uh, patient encounters, the people coming into our facilities. And the reason we'll see those changes um, is, if you remember last year, was kind of a transition year. We implemented two different computer programs, an electronic medical record, and then we started the um, WIC instead of paper vouchers being on a, a debit card. So those two processes really kind of um, threw us for a loop with um, uh, patient encounters. We also had several um, providers who were out with FMLA and those kinds of things. So we'll start to see those numbers come up again this year in all of our programs. We've already seen some uh, drastic increases just in January from the January before, which is what we would be expecting to see. Um, and I talked a little bit about last time we met, um, how the state had sent us to do some uh, very beginning uh, efficiency type process trainings and looking at things through an organization called Coleman Associates. They're just experts that help uh, health departments in FQHC or federally qualified health clinics um, work through patient um, processes, how they flow through clinics, how to be more efficient and effective. And so we've started some of those processes and uh, first in the in the Mid-Cumberland area to do any of these. And they've really, we've seen some drastic increases of uh, availability of patient appointments and time in and time outs going way down by just starting these processes. One of them is inpatient, in-room patient registration. We talked a little bit about that last month where um, we take the patient in the room and bring the little mobile desk to them and check them in. Kind of if you've ever uh, been in an ER situation, you go to the hospital, the, the registration clerk kind of rolls into you. They don't ask you, hey, get up while you're really, really hurt or sick and come and fill out this paperwork. So we kind of are marrying that from some of the stuff we ran, uh, learned from Coleman and Associates and uh, we were able to increase several patient appointment slots and decrease time in and out by 15 to 20 minutes for whole procedures. And uh, we started with our dental looking at that. So just some interesting stuff that we're doing. I'll be giving you some reports on that through, throughout the year. That's pretty much the summary of my report this month. A quick update on influenza. Yes. There's been school systems across the state that have shut down. Yes. We've not experienced nothing like that. Right. We are still having a peak here in Rutherford County. It's definitely right in always January and February are kind of our peak times. Um, I think because we're geographically very large, it helps us with the absenteeism out of school. So when it's hitting the north end of the county, it's not necessarily hit the south end of the county yet. By the time the north is feeling better, it's come down to the south and, and vice versa. And I think that's why, because we're geographic, you don't hear as much as you do in some of the smaller geographic um, counties. We still are having a ton of flu, uh, both A and B. Um, flu vaccine still available, flu vaccine still free, and flu vaccine is still effective. Um, uh, 
you can still get the flu, you know, well into the summer. We are in the peak. It would have been good to get it sooner, but if they haven't gotten it yet, they can still get it. So just a little update on flu and where we are on that. FYI, if you got it back in October, you don't need another one. That's exactly right. You do not. One for the season, one for the year. One for the year will keep you covered. And, you know, you'll hear these, um, I guess, rumors or people saying, oh, I got my flu shot, but I still got the flu. The, that does happen, that does occasionally happen, but it's a much less case, a much less severe case of the flu. If you have an unprotected person who gets the flu, they can be out of work for two weeks or, or greater. If you have someone who's vaccinated who gets the flu, they can be out a couple of days. So it really is a, a different response to your body, even though you still, those couple of days feel pretty bad and, and uh, you're, you're like, why didn't it work? It really is working, it's just, Sometimes it just is the, the strain that you pick up is not quite the one that was in the, in the shot. Uh, uh, last month, did, did you make a comment about uh, maybe need more room at the Smyrna location? Yeah, well, we were talking um, about the possibility of growing in the next five years, okay. 10 years, what our population is looking like. Right now we're doing good, but we are property line to property line in Smyrna. Um, there's no place to expand and you can't go up on that type of building that we have there. So nothing has to be drastically right. Right. That's exactly right. Okay. Just we need to sort of start tr strategically planning for what we know is coming with uh, what the statistics tell us as far as population and those kinds of things are happening. Have you been able to complete your isolation room this morning? Uh, no, we do have the the uh, the PO back, and we have contacted the persons. So we're just waiting now for them to to come out and do it. So we're very close, which is exciting, and they do it in a day. So it happens really fast once we get the money realigned and get the purchase orders and then get in touch with them and get on their calendar to come out and do it. It will happen really quick. So probably by next month I'll be able to report that we have that up and going. Are you seeing any kind of an increase in requests for the birth certificates because of the real ID? <laughs> yeah. You would? Yes, we have definitely seen an a increase and a lot of questions, you know. So we tried to put on our um, website, if you just Google Rutherford County Health Department, an uh, in-depth what you need, who can pick it up, who, you know, how much does it cost, all those questions you can find right on our website to help, because um, sometimes it's difficult, sometimes we get as many as 200 phone calls an hour at the health department, so it might be difficult to get through to ask those questions, so I'm trying to think of alternative ways to get information out there, and one of the things people call a lot about our birth certificates, how do I get it, can I pick up my wife's, can I pick up my child's, how much does it cost, mm -hmm. and all those questions are answered on our, our website. Um, or you can call the health department. Do you want to answer some of those for us here now since you're on camera? Sure, sure. <laughs> so a lot of times people say, can I pick up one for my child? Yes, you can pick up one for your child um, without any issue. Um, if you're picking up one for a friend or you're an aunt and you're going to pick one up for someone else, you will need a notarized statement from the parent of the child to pick up the birth certificate. So that's that's one that we commonly get. What about a spouse? Yeah, uh, a <clears throat> spouse, they can come and um, get that with just uh, proof of their, that they're married, marriage life. And what's the cost? Mm. I just went you. blank. It's on your website. <laughs> 15, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I just went blank. I was like, what? I know how much these are. $15. How far do you go back? Like, can you oh, get yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> I'm asking for me. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so there was a time frame not too many years ago, but now the state is all electronic. We have a new system. So as far back as they make them, yes. As far back as we were doing them, you can now get them, yeah. And then, do you have and then we also do death certificates as well. Um, anything you want to share with us about the coronavirus? Uh, updates on coronavirus are every week, uh, basically. So every, by the time I'm coming and telling you something at one month, the next month it's going. Um, I, we are very prepared. This is the kind of thing that we prepare for in public health. Um, so we practice scenarios exactly like this on knowing what to do and how to react. 
um, as we get information, we're updating our local community of medical doctors and uh, hospitals through what's called the Tennessee Health Alert Network, or THON, we call it. And those messages go out to all those providers, first responders, on exactly, okay, this week we know this about the disease and this is what we need to do, so that they're kept up to date. It also is a triage tool for doctors when they see patients who have certain travel history or certain um, histories in their medical history that they would know what to ask for and then who to contact if they do have those kinds of symptoms. So um, so I think this is something that we're as prepared for as we can be in, um, in our plannings and um, something that's changing pretty rapidly. Um, right now they're telling us that it is just similar symptoms, the beginning of like a flu type symptoms, respiratory uh, related. And uh, we do expect that uh, there will be more cases in the United States. Um, at this point, we don't um, have any in Tennessee, um, but that is one of the things that the state is very on top of in what we call surveillance mm -hmm. and the epidemiological work that goes along with prevention of diseases in our state. And then once they are here, um, containing them and figuring out what we need to do in the steps. So I will keep us up to date each month on what we know. Um, and then uh, as far as the, the Tennessee Department of Health's website or Facebook page um, and other methods are trying to get the information out that the CDC has. I think the main uh, resource, if, if anybody has any questions or concerns, um, you know, that they can talk to their private doctors. If they don't have one, they can call us. If their private doctors or providers have questions, they know to call us. Mm -hmm. um, medical clinics at MTSU and walk-in clinics, they know to call us and call us pretty frequently and regularly about different concerns or questions. Uh, we talk to the school nurses on a daily basis pretty much on um, both for the county and the city schools on what kind of uh, information they need to do and what needs to change in their pattern. So um, there's a lot of behind the scenes stuff that happens in these kind of um, virus things that come up throughout H1N1 is probably the last one that we can all remember that was recent that kind of had a similar um, beginning. There's lots of, like I said, new information. We've got the um, uh, vaccine in the works. The CDC is saying that they're months ahead of where it should be in the vaccine production. Um, but even a months ahead is still looking at next season before we would have anything. And if you remember with H1N1, it was similar. We had one season where we didn't have a vaccine, the next season where we did have a vaccine. So that's pretty much what I know about uh, coronavirus at this point or what they're calling uh, coronavirus 19. Okay. Any more questions for Ms. Garrett? Okay. Move to approve the report. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. Appreciate Thank you guys. Appreciate your support. Okay. Next we've got a um, community care report. I think we've got a guest with us. Yeah. Ms. Catherine, please come up. I'm here in place of uh, Ms. Cook, but I told her I could never take place, take her place. I'm Russell Carr, and I'm the interim administrator for community care of Rutherford County. And I bring you greetings from all the patients and the staff. Uh, they want to wanted me to tell you how much they appreciate your support and how much they are uh, happy that uh, you guys are there and we know you're there to help us to make it through each day. I've got a few items, if it's okay with you, to you. present. Uh, one of them is the fact that we're doing the remodeling. I know you probably heard that over the years and months, but it's actually gonna get started. And we're that close, we're almost there. So uh, we are getting started on the uh, remodeling of, it'd be 25 rooms and therapy. This is about 50 patients and the furniture and the fixtures and everything to remodel the everything from the ceiling to the floor. So we're excited about that and the patients in one of those wings are already, it's empty, there's no patients there, so we're ready to get started right away. And then when we get that wing finished, we'll move the residents over and do the wing, do the other wing. So that's how we've planned it so far. 
We're also excited about our daycare. Our daycare is, uh, has uh, the ability to have 28 uh, children, and we have 28 children. And so, and we have a waiting list up until 2021. Mm -hmm. So we're excited about uh, what they're doing. They're having a great time. The interaction is wonderful with the patients and the, uh, the children, the children coming over and visiting me. Uh, it's just a great uh, marriage of folks together. And it just is wonderful to see seniors and children working together uh, each day. Also, we are excited about the fact that we may be able to have 24-hour daycare. Uh, this is in the works right now. It's just in the very preliminary beginning. But if we can, we'll be able to have, uh, right now we're from 6 uh, a.m. to 6 p.m. in daycare. So we hope to have it all the way around. This will help people who work uh, for us in our area, in the area of the nursing home, to, in other words, if they work 3 to 11, uh, right now, they could only leave their children there till six, but then they could carry on. It may not be all night, but it be part of the night or part of the evening that we have. And then we have people who come in in dietary early, people that come in other departments early, some that leave later, eight o'clock in the evening. So this will give us more coverage for their children to come there. Right now, about 40% of uh, all the children there are uh, from employees that we have at the center. And then there's another 30 or so percent that actually is Rutherford County employees, children. And then the community makes up the, the, the remainder of that. So we're excited about this. This is from, I don't know if you know, from six weeks to five years old. Would you all like to come and help us? <laughs> <laughs> I'm on the waiting list too. Yeah, so I said it goes into yeah. 2021. Uh, yeah. Impressive. Yeah, let me follow up on that. Uh, we were approached by uh, Chamber of Commerce to apply for a grant. Um, it wasn't Chamber of Commerce. It was um, United Way. Uh, United, United Way. Way. United yeah. Way approached us. I thought you had another grant. <laughs> United Way. United Way. There was a food bank and also a Boys and Girls Club. Right. And their vision is is a lot of. Um, 24 hour, I, I think would be the only one in the state, especially associated with a nursing home, we would be. But a lot of 24 hour daycare centers just don't make it for whatever reason. I think by the time that you buy the property, you build a building and bring it up to life safety codes, everything else, they have a hard time making it. But here we have our property is paid for, we have a facility there, we have built in. Um, cafeteria to where the foods can be prepped, etc. So uh, ours is very successful. I and mean, they approached us and asked us if we'd be interested. So we have applied for the, for the grant. Right. Um, the, the Boys and Girls Club also sees an opportunity for Smyrna by using their facility back behind Smyrna Middle and, and possibly growing into that. But like Rich is uh, Pillsbury, they all have that second, third shift that will, could possibly grow into this this daycare, 24-hour daycare center who, I mean, there's a, a lot of people who just can't work a second or third shift because they don't have anybody to take care of their kids. Sure. So it's a, it, I'm kind of excited about it. It's a, it's a great opportunity. We have plenty if we want to go back to Christie Houston and get a, a grant and build on or, or build a, a, a true brick and mortar building because we're in a double wide right now, our daycare center is. And uh, if we want to do something, so we've really become known as the true uh, community care of the exactly. county because we're exactly. taking care of the young and the old. Mm -hmm. you know, so it's a, it's a great opportunity. What would that grant cover? The one, the United, the United Way grant, what's it going to cover? Um, if we, yeah, the staff and, the staff. and you know, you know, uh, us being able to cover both shifts okay. of second and third shift. It's kind of your seed money to get that going. Exactly. That's correct. Awesome. They they see a need throughout the whole county with right. as many manufacturing jobs, from Nissan to whatever mm -hmm. that all have second third shifts, and and they're just trying to give opportunity for people to have good paying jobs, but then 
this is a segment that they've identified that, that so many are prohibited because there's no place to take the kids. I know that's one of the things that I heard also about through um, Tennessee Reconnect. That was an issue that some of those students were experiencing as well as adult students trying to return Correct. to you know, get their education and they didn't right. have child care. So I think the Boys and Girls Clubs tried to work with some of them as well. So yeah, that's fantastic. I'm sorry to add on. No, that's great. I didn't know if you wanted to go that, that okay. in depth in there. I, we are excited. Yeah. Uh, the, the employees that work out there are excited. The ones in the that work in the nursing home are excited to, to have this because they see it too. For them to have the opportunity, that they're having to do some other things right now, uh, and so this will be this will be a great asset to the community out there as well as the whole county. Russell on the board brought us Russell on. He's been able to uh, finally get the contract with. Him. Veterans Administration uh, signed in the ink, and we've already picked up several patients. So, helping our census bring the VA patients in, and, and uh, you know, yeah, we're, we've had three. Yeah, and we just started at the first of the month, so, so it's working out well. And, for us. and if you know how that is, well, I'm not saying if you know how that is, the paperwork takes a while <laughs> with the VA. So a few more sheets, right? It's a few more sheets, Pardon. but they've been very cooperative with us and helping us get it started because it really is. Uh, takes a while to get through the meetings and everything. Everybody knows what's got to be done and turned right. in and so forth. Uh, but they are, and they're great to work with. And the patients have been very good, very good. Is there a patient waiting list? Uh, are you talking about for the VA or for anybody? Anybody. No. No, we're in pretty good shape. The only thing that causes a waiting list is when we run out of rooms for men or run out of rooms for women. And right now, we don't have room for men. That's just, and tomorrow we may have. It changes that quickly. So as far as a list, it would be a short-term list. It wouldn't be a long, like they used to have really long waiting lists. There's, we don't have that much anymore. Very cool. So. Joe, we need to hang on for a little while. I wouldn't go say that, but uh, yes. if you need services, we're always there. <laughs> Asking for a friend, right? There. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Also, I wanted to talk about just some minor things, but things that were important to us, and that was like the front entrance. I know you guys were there. Uh, December. You said December. December. Mm -hmm. Well, we've redone the front entrance area between the two sets of doors, where it's a little more. Uh, Aesthetic. Aesthetically pleasing, but it's also uh, good for, it has runoff carpet in it now where you can come in with wet shoes and so forth and equipment and wheelchairs. It's made it easier for the wheelchairs. It's made yes. it a lot easier, yes. And so we've seen that already happen. Okay. So it's uh, it's been good. We got that, that through with. Uh, also in the dietary department, we had some things that we wanted to improve on. And one of them is a piece of equipment that uh, can keeps our, uh, it helps us to keep our plates and so forth warmer, hotter, longer, so that when we're serving, it doesn't lose its temperature and doesn't lose the quality of the food, doesn't uh, go down. So that was a big thing that the board has helped us to, to do. And uh, in the activity department, well, we just have fun every day. They have a great time. But I wanted to tell you, if you didn't know this, we went ice skating. And I know that sounds improbable, but it, it happened. <laughs> Okay. They went ice skating. The patients were in wheelchairs, and the staff were on ice skates, oh, wow. skating around and having a great time. And then after that, uh, we've had some trips out to Toots, good food and fun, yeah. of course. <laughs> and that's what they had. They had good food and fun. Just a plug. Just yeah. a plug. <laughs> but I wonder, it wasn't so much that. What I wanted to tell you was how the how the community reacts. They react so well yeah. to us going, whether it's there or any other. Mm -hmm. Uh, unnamed uh, restaurant, <laughs> but uh, they do. They they are very welcoming, very uh, hospitable to the patients coming and having a good time, and they do. They have a good time all the time. So that kind of give you the yeah. synopsis real quick. Uh, I'm sure Miss Cook would have done a better job. Yes, no. so. hey. If you have any questions, I'll be glad to help. You. Any specific questions? And we also have the report on our iPad, so we had an opportunity to cruise that. Well, so. if there are no questions, I'll entertain a motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. 
Thank you so much. I appreciate it. All right, thank you. Thank you all for your support. Thank appreciate you. it. I think the mayor may draw a line at zip lining. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's an idea. We do have some <laughs> land out there. <laughs> all right, special projects. Charlie. <laughs> This is a report you've had for a few days. Is there anything in particular you want to point out to us? Any no, changes? There's that been raised as a question. Rockville High School is still open. <laughs> still, I mean, we're, still, we're still spending money. It takes a while to get all the furniture mm -hmm. fixtures, all that. Mm -hmm. Any other questions for Ms. Jolly? I won't entertain motion. Move to approve. All in favor? Aye. Very good. Thank you. All right. Report report. Come on up, Terry. I want her report. I, I know you did. I was saying that. Yeah. Something tells me I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> it depends on you. I understand. You're 100% correct. Good evening. Um, Mr. Spurlock, we had a board meeting tonight. He's intending on coming, and I don't know whether he's going to make it or not. If he's not, I'm going to um, pass it out. And this is not for vote or motion. This is for information. When we come back next month, that these will actually be ahead of time. But I wanted to give them to you this month. Just to kind of give you an idea um, what we're going to be talking about next month. Let's see, we have one more down there. Okay, what you have in front of you, the sheet that's stapled together, is our Fund 177 from this year. What were our capital projects that we're actually have already been funding and we're working on? This year, Mr. Bodrew will be along to do some budget amendments. What we, what Doug and I have been working on together is we're going to try and start working a little more in step with each other. Not that we didn't work in step with Jeff Sandy, Mr. Party, but Jeff and I are just trying to do things. I mean, Doug and I are trying to do things a little bit different. So we're going to begin to maybe come a month ahead give you some information. That way, if you have some questions, we'll have a month to do. you can reach out back to us and ask us. And then the next month, we'll bring it back to you for your actual vote. Maybe a tweak or two in it. And, and, and by that, I mean, this is nothing that you all haven't seen for many years, but this is something that Doug and I are doing. And, and we've highlighted a few things in yellow, just so they kind of jump out for conversation tonight. So if you look at your first one up there, the Eagleville Complex, we had uh, budgeted $476,990. That's what was budgeted when y'all voted to fund this capital projects back then. When we got around to getting our bids in, it was $488,990. So Doug will be amending, if you'll look in that amended column, you're gonna see what he's coming, gonna come to you next month with. Is we're going to be amending $12,000 to make that fund balance. Now, we're not asking for any money. We have no new projects, but some things came in a little under budget, some things a little bit over, so we're moving the funds, requesting to move the funds around in capital projects from one to the other. So if you look down at gymnasium floors, there's Central Magnet, Blackman High, and Wilson. Well, you actually will see what we had budgeted and what the prices came in at. So we have some additional dollars, and this is something we've done in the past. We're gonna go ahead and start what we're gonna call this year's list. Go ahead and knock two or three of them out with this funds with y'all's approval. And these would be gems that we would be asking for for 2021. We'll just get a few of them done ahead of time. Um, so those are the kind of things you're looking at. Nothing major um, of any consequence, but coming to you a month ahead for you guys to look at. So that's the first item. The second item is the eight and a half by 11. Um, the school board is going to be 
taking up Thursday night capital projects five-year plan. We relook at this every year uh, of what we think we're going to be looking to fund uh, over the next five years. Um, this is what I, Mr. Spurlock and I proposed to the board in a work session tonight. Uh, there was, uh, of course, a lot of discussion. So this may look a little bit different when we come back next month. But basically what we're pro we were proposing is the elementary at Ten Oaks, which is the Christiana School, and in addition to Laverne Middle, and we still have the Laverne High School, Smyrna High restroom concessions on the list, uh, hopefully for consideration for this year. It's a 20 year running project, right? Yes, sir, the one that never goes away. Um, Until this year. We're going to fight it right through. <laughs> I hope so. Me too. Uh, we, we need it. Uh, but anyway, so the Tan Oaks project, and in addition, similar to what we did at Oakland Middle, we would be requesting to build at Laverne Middle on the north end. Uh, then next year, we're looking at um, hopefully a middle school on the 84096 corridor, Roy Waldron addition, which is not as large because it's an elementary school, but uh, we did an addition there a few years ago. Those of you that have been on this committee for a little bit will remember that. About five or six years ago, we did an addition. Well, it's already full. Uh, and on that end of the county, there is no, there's not land available to try and find to build another school. So we're looking to do another addition at Roy Waldron. Um, there was uh, then we were looking at, for 2023, would be the uh, Matthews property, which is up around uh, Walter Hill, a middle school, and then an elementary in that 84096 corridor. I could see that elementary getting pushed up. Um, the, the elementary schools between Blackman Elementary and Stewart's Creek, Rocky Fort, those schools, those elementary schools down there uh, are all overcrowded. Um, I would not be surprised to see Rocky Fork Elementary, which we just opened, knocking on the door of capacity next year. It's there. I don't know where these children are coming from. If somebody's driving up and dropping them off out in front of the schools, but <laughs> there's a lot of them there. I can tell you, you're getting a lot of. Smyrna has approved. The, the, the town of Smyrna has approved, and the city of Laverne both approved a lot of high density housing. You're getting a lot of newer families, thus with younger, younger kids, children. Uh, as opposed to more mature uh, families who've been couples who've been married 10 years and their kids are approaching middle school age, and uh, so on. So you're seeing that shift with the higher density uh, housing. So. I can tell you exactly where you're getting them from, and I don't see it ceasing. Okay. Mm -hmm. Agreed. So we briefly discussed this, and we've just kind of gone through. Then we're looking at um, opening in 2026, 20, another high school, which would need to start in 24. Uh, so there would be a little crossover between uh, the projects that start, that open in 24, and this project, but it would be um, probably eight to ten months of overlap, where one would start and the others are, are finishing. Let me go there. Just to take some of the things that we're doing, we did, we've did. we talked about this tonight. Uh, Head Start will be leaving our annex at John Coleman at the end of the school year. What we've done is we've looked at, uh, I think there's about seven or eight schools that currently house voluntary uh, pre-K. And um, what we're going to do is we're going to move that pre-K program those, from those eight schools, and it'll be about somewhere around 200 kids to the annex, of the John Common Annex. And what it will do, it will, uh, it will provide, some, some schools will provide two classrooms, some will provide one, but what we're trying to do is alleviate some of that overcrowdedness by using this facility that we have down there. 
Because I know at one point you talked about creating a alternative the alternative schools, and that didn't go over well for the lower grades. But we got we got an idea we got an idea for for alternative schools too. We're going to be looking at a model where we kind of keep uh, depending we're gonna, depending on the infraction uh, <coughs> if it's not real egregious. It's looking at a model where we can kind of keep them at their school. Okay. So th that would cut down on you know overcrowdedness in their alternative schools. Uh, and I say all this because it sounds like we're just rambling on, uh, we're going to build this, we're going to build that, you know, but we're, we're, we are looking at ways that we can maximize all the space that we have. Yeah. We're, even, we're even doing a major reallocation of our central office, office, trying to, we've grown there as well, and that building was opened some years back when we were a much smaller school system. Uh, and it, we're kind of like some of our schools. We've got, we've moved people into closets and mm -hmm. <laughs> um, things of that nature, trying to stretch added cubicles um, in places that work designed for cubicles. And so we're looking at creative ways to get some additional space there and reallocate that as well. Yeah, what we're doing there is we're going to move our adult high school. Of course, they use it at night, so it will go and use the John Coleman Annex at night on another wing, outside of another wing. Okay. Yeah, so that will free us up to take the non-instructional, non-financial part of our central office and relocate it over to the uh, we're adult areas. Adult We're going to take technology, transportation, <coughs> food services, construction, and engineering. We're going to move mm -hmm. over to where adult ed is, which will give. We've even got some people over at Adult Ed that need to be in the main building. We just didn't have the place for them. So we're going to be, allow us to bring them back and reprioritize those spaces so that we can get those people where they need to be. Those pre-K 200 kids, how does that work in terms of transportation? They, they provide their own transportation okay. anyway. And, and probably probably the school, we, we're talking about David Urey, Smyrna Elementary, Smyrna Primary, Cedar Grove. Cedar Grove is probably the one that's furthest away from it, okay. but it is pre-K volunteer. Okay, yeah. so you're not talking about all over the county, you're talking about... No, I'm talking about the northern end of the county, gotcha. yeah. Gotcha. Uh, there is one thing that I found tonight, I apologize. The number at the bottom of the school program is 381, that number's incorrect in the formula somewhere it didn't pick up a number. That total is actually 491,798,828. And we'll have that fixed and whatever the school board decides to vote in what order, we'll have that corrected when we come back. I really was... You like the other one? The other one the other. Well, I liked it too. The other way, the other way around. I like us. I thought that really, that's that's a hundred million dollars off from what we've been looking at the last several years. It is, and, and what happened is when the when Doug and I redid the formula, it didn't pick up the one ten two twenty. Madam Chairman, we should approve this tonight. <laughs> 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 um, but there again, we wanted to bring it to you early so you can. Take a look at it, and then, um, like I said, at your next meeting, we'll be back with both of these items, um, looking for some kind of official vote. Um, as you're working from this, it would help me. It's always helped me in the past, and you may continue to do the way Jeff did, to color code the things that have already been funded. That's and, always and that's it's stayed that way. That's yeah. why the blue line at the that's top is the only thing that's funded. Everything okay. underneath that is not. Okay. I so I continued that. with right. Jeff's okay. theme. Yeah, because mm -hmm. it, it's just helpful at a glance. It to does. See it does. And that's why there's a couple of notes over there that are in blue. Uh, if you look at the Tan Oaks Elementary, there's 10 million that's already been approved by the site you, for the site work. Remember, we came back. Mm -hmm. You guys went ahead and approved the site work for a portion of it, 10 I thought, million. I thought we had already funded the design for the Laverne restaurants, Laverne Smart restaurants. Mm -hmm. I thought that was the one thing that got through was the design only. It is design. Uh, so we've we never we've never paid for it. Mm -hmm. Okay. It is done. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, there's also the 364 for Roy Waldron. Um, that's there, so that's been funded. So okay. so. The items in blue have been funded. Okay. Um, 
to, uh, and, and, any, and as we fund the other things, we'll continue to keep those in blue. Okay. So if it's not shaded, it's new money. That is correct. Okay. Yes, ma'am. This is the, kind of the five-year plan. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. The, the more recent updated five-year plan. I, I'm not sure I can read this tiny writing as good as <laughs> I should be able to, but I see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven new schools on the five-year plan. That's what they're wishing for. It's actually, let me double double check. I got six. Okay. One, two, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You're correct. Seven. 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 Yes. Two and two additions. Did you have a follow up? That, my, I got a <laughs> follow up is we we had at least some beginning of a conversation last year, and I know you probably don't remember it, uh, and I'm not even sure it's appropriate, but we talked about all the schools, the high schools especially, we built on this end of the county, and how close they are to each other, the way the crow flies anyway. And, and why not build larger high schools mm -hmm. so that we don't have to build them so freaking close together? Uh, it, how, about, how big do you think we should build? A three thousand? Uh, yeah. They do have one. They do have a three thousand one. It's a three-story, three thousand school that'll be open up next fall, in Wilson County. It, it, it's okay with me. Yeah, one hundred and twenty-eight or one hundred thirty million dollars. But, but what I'm saying is that we've got these schools that are, in my mind, really, really close together. And, and why not build larger schools? Mm -hmm. And you know, you can. You, you, you can separate, we. separate them somehow, some way, and, and it seems like we'd save money in the long run and, and not have to build them mm -hmm. so close together and stack them on top. Right. And I know there are ideal numbers mm -hmm. for high schools and those kinds of things, but we're not in an ideal situation no. here. So mm -mm. I'm, I'm just asking. No, I, I, I agree with you. Like I said, uh, Wilson County's got a three-story uh, high school. I mean, uh, that's... That, I wish them at Green Hills. It, it sure is. I mean, so it, I mean, something like that might not be a bad idea. I mean, I mean, I mean, we're all for it. We can't find land, so why can't we build up? Yeah. Mm -hmm. The other thing too, I mean, it would seem to me that you could break down administratively. Right. Uh, I know in some districts and so on that they have schools within a school, right. so to speak. Mm -hmm. In other words, physically occupying part of the same space and common things like cafeteria mm -hmm. and, and, and so on, but then from a learning perspective, they're kind of governed as an academy within mm -hmm. us. Yeah, uh, absolutely. We, when we have some, in fact. Right. You know, we got uh, Oakland, the IB program is a school within a school. We got a Cambridge program at Smyrna High School is a yeah. school within a school. Carry that a step further mm -hmm. and, you know, <coughs> yeah, land the premium. Yeah, and, absolutely. And, and, and then one of the things that Mr. Lee that uh, had came up, come up with is as we build the school, is build out for if there has to be an addition, you know, put the rough in the, the utilities. And, and I think you may have gone over that one. I don't know if I did here, I, and I may have, and if I did, y'all stop me. Basically what we've done is re-looked at all of our buildings that we're presently building. And what we've done in the past is they've been built and then we turn around and start adding portables to them. But they're mm -hmm. not made for expansion. So the Tan Oak School will be the first school that we've gone in and looked at and we've redesigned our utilities. So that once that school is built, it's the same footprint. It's not going to look any different than Stewart's Creek or Laverne Lake. But what is different is our utilities inside the building. So when that school, hopefully not in my lifetime, but when that school reaches capacity and it becomes time to consider whether we're going to put portables there, we're not going to put portables. Mm -hmm. We're going to add on four classrooms. Each wing of that building is designed to add four classrooms. And for the price of four or five portables and getting them in there, we can add on four classrooms mm -hmm. because the utilities are already going to be there. So that school will be able to add another 16 classes. 
to go on each wing. If it's properly designed, that's a concept that's used. I mean, look at St. Mm -hmm. Thomas Rutherford. Mm -hmm. yes. It was built to have three more stories added onto that wing. Stonecrest, the first, the top floor to Stonecrest, the first several years uh, had no occupants. Right. It was just a shell. Mm -hmm. uh, All of our new designs going forward have this right. principle was uh, in an empty space. Mm -hmm. For years, I mean that's well, a constant. Parking garage was yeah. built with three hundred fifty thousand dollars of support piers. Mm -hmm. Right. For us to build the county to build a six-story building where the gazebo is next to the library and go straight up from there. Right. But after we put the money in there, then mm -hmm. the city said, "No, we don't want you messing up the fountain or our landscape." <laughs> <laughs> so we got three hundred fifty thousand uh, still stuck over there. Uh, I think it's a great idea. But we're looking. To answer you, we are looking at those kinds of things. So, as I said, some of these may move around, but the numbers may change because we are looking at those kind of things. Can we look at Wilson County to see what they've done? And maybe exact, we may not do it exactly like they've done, but we may take some of their concepts. We look at every new thing that comes out every time we build a new building. We start, we look at technology, we look at infrastructure, we look at lighting, we look at energy, uh, things. We, we don't, we're going back and looking at things to what can we do better? Because I, we understand, it, it's turn around and you got one and then it seems like we're building one on top of another one. That, that just to me, there, I've always said, you know, if you use the, the, the courthouse here as a, dividing line, the middle of the county. Everything is built on this end of the county, and there's nothing as far as high schools built on this end of the county. At some point in time, mm -hmm. that has to change. We keep building high schools on this end of the county, and it creates more right. growth. Mm -hmm. So at some point in time, right. like Christiana or something mm -hmm. like that, we're going to have to begin to... Yeah, I see what you're talking about. However, I would have to disagree with you on one thing. Okay. okay. When you look well, I mean, let's be, let's look at their maps. Okay. <laughs> when you look at the infrastructure of the uh, Blackman Stewart's Creek area, sure. you've got access to every major thoroughfare, and and, and you know, and and, and and no offense, but two third down to two thirty one, you got to come back into Murfreesboro to hit a, a major thoroughfare. Now, that will that change someday, perhaps. You know, but we do, I do agree with you on this part, however. I think that if we build our schools on the edges of our county, then we will extract some of that stuff out into the, you know, further out. And I think that's probably what we're seeing now. You know? and, and I think that's one reason we've looked at the Tan Oaks property. It has property for a high school. And the Matthews property, it has property for a high school. And, and I think I agree with you. We've listened, we, and we're beginning. We've looked at some of those things, and we are trying to get over there. And hopefully, I'd say within the next ten years, there'll be a high school in that area, more or less, because we've got two sites. Yeah, and there's a lot of growth. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Where is it? There a lot of growth, but the the, the growth has. I'm going to say it's kind of rounded the curve and it's beginning to, we're beginning to see it over there as well. I have a couple of questions. Um, when we do begin to look at building differently, if that's mm -hmm. something that's on the horizon for us, we've always said when you say no to one thing, you're saying yes to something else. And so I'd like for us to also hear what are we saying yes to? What are the things that we're going to have to accept? What are some of those pills we're going to have to swallow mm -hmm. under that model that we've not had to swallow right. under other models? Because there will be some things that we'll like about it, mm -hmm. and there'll be some things we're not going to like about it. So I just want to make sure we know sure. that yeah, going absolutely. into it. So you know, one, you know, one of the things is uh, safety. I mean, I think that's one, one thing. Uh, you know, uh, obviously, you don't want to build a three-story uh, elementary school. I hope not. You don't want to because that's not going to work with your grade bands. You know, your your smaller kids they can't you know they can't go up on the third floor. Uh, high school, it could uh, you know. I mean, obviously, uh, Central Central High School was it got two floors. I mean, we've we've had two floor high school before. Um, 
you know, those those kind of things maybe could be, but I, I, quite frankly, I don't think it would be to the to the detriment of anything that we couldn't uh, we couldn't take care of it very easily. I don't really see uh, building a three-story high school. I don't see that being you know a huge issue. To be honest with you. I, just, I know one of the things that we'd always heard previously were, you know, the core accommodations. Yeah. You know, your, mm -hmm. your gymnasium, yeah. your, um, your cafeteria. Mm -hmm. So would you need to have two? Would you need to have, you know, what are things you might need right. to do differently to accommodate? Well, you're, that's, that's a good, you're, you're all right there. If we increase the, obviously, the capacity of the school, you would have to have a bigger cafeteria. You'd have to have... You know, a possibly a gym. We already have those things now. Two gym. gyms at Sturge Creek. Uh, a gym and a, and a um, alter, uh, we call alter, auxiliary, auxiliary gym. gym. Yeah. So we already have those things, but it, you're right about the cafeteria. We'd have to expand the, the cafeteria and stuff like that. Because you know, we, we've talked about this before too. You know, you've got colleges mm -hmm. that make it work. Mm -hmm. You know, and so it's the same kind of thing. I'm just curious about, you know, would you need to build it to look more like? that kind of a campus. I don't, I don't know. I'm I think, just, you know, I think you'd have to, to take a look at our design. I think you'd have to revisit our designs and stuff like that, what we're currently doing. Yeah. You know, to, yeah. to, to accommodate that. You want your, you want your walkers. Okay. The other thing, mm -hmm. question I have for you, Trey, was you, you mentioned this a second ago and it was in terms of lead time. Mm -hmm. That's something we need to make sure that we are really building into this, especially now that we're having to factor in that infrastructure and the roads. And, you know, we talked about that before. We knew that that was going to be a burden that was going to be on us to say yes sooner so that Greg Brooks has time or whoever, Mike Hughes, has time to help us plan for that road network. So those are some things that you're going to have to continue to kind of put in our face and remind us to right. say okay, my student population is here, mm -hmm. but I need time to build growth to right. here. So, um, so you, as much as we, right. you know, we know that's part of this, and then we've asked you to consider roads, mm -hmm. you're going to have to kind of right. push back on us a little bit on that and make sure that we're being mindful of that mm -hmm. in terms of the scheduling. Because I know plenty of times, I've been on this commission a long time, plenty of times we push that yes to as late as we possibly sure. can. And so you, a lot of times we, you know, hurt your ability to pull the trigger and get bids when you need them, that kind of thing. And, we, and we've paid the price for that and having to, you know, delay so opening some schools. Factoring in an additional 18 months, 24 months, whatever, for a road network, that's a whole new level we've not done before. Yes. And so we've said we're, we're going to do it. You're going to have to make sure that we do it to keep you on schedule. So. And I think that's one reason we tried to get this proposal out now and, and tweak it. I don't see any of these schools going away. They may shift Early. up a year or down a year, but over the next six years, these are the schools I see us. At present growth, these are the schools that we're going to be building. Whether they move up or down is going to be determined by how fast those children come in the door. And that we can't predict. And, and, and quite frankly, uh, getting back to the northern end of the county, you'll see those zone lines contract, like your Blackman, and then that will uh, handle your situation when you're talking about the road on top of each other. You'll see that those contract, and you will build a school away from that zone because that, that will contract. Right now, uh, up until this past year with Rockville, Blackman went across uh, 96 and went on, went, went on down Rucker Lane and, and had kids over there. You know, until we added that. Right. So as that gets, I mean, if you look at, uh, there's someone said a uh, the number of, uh, of people coming in and residing into Rutherford County, and it was broken down by quadrants. Mm -hmm. And you looked at that Blackman zone that had the highest amount. You know, in that in that uh, from from Stewart's Creek all the way almost until you get up into in, into uh, Murfreesboro. That's where everyone was right. relocating, and I mean, it's obvious why. Right. I mean, you're. Infrastructure. Well, another part is going to become obvious to all of us once the census is complete and we do the redistricting. And mm -hmm. I was on that committee after we did the census in 2010, mm -hmm. and every single one of our districts migrated west right. because that's where the population was. Right. And so I think that's the same thing that we're mm -hmm. going to see. And you see it probably mm -hmm. already from the school kids. You know where they are. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I think we'll all see that impact. I think you're right. I mean, I, I can see district, district 9, which is the northwest corner, mm -hmm. contracting considerably mm -hmm. because we've added 
probably 10, 12,000 people. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, it's going to con contract. It's a lot. Mm -hmm. It is a lot. It's going to change. Mm -hmm. Any other questions or comments we've got in here? I just want you know, I know this is sticker shock. I can remember uh, a couple of years back watching you guys here, and I think Mr. Oldham was here. <laughs> it, it was it was almost five, it was over 500 million, so it's just a little bit less. I remember I remember the mayor. I, I, oh, I, know, I remember the mayor's uh, face, and I, uh, but this this does it's, it's, this is a lot. There's some things you know. Obviously, we we, we put this down here. Uh, you know, in a in a perfect world, sure. obviously it would be. But we're we're looking at, and we do appreciate you guys. Uh, I know y'all have got a, a difficult task yourself, and we we want to be part of the solution, not part of the problem. And, that's, and we will continue to work that way. I have one question. Mm -hmm. A year or so ago, and this was, and it may have been ambitious for you to try mm -hmm. to take that on at the time, just. Assuming the I know position. what you're going to say. I read your mind, and she knows about it because I do have my guy. And has he contacted he you? Yes, yes. Okay, so they're they're starting a committee already. Now, what we'll probably do is we'll look at elementary schools because it's a little more feasible. You're talking about the multi uh, schedule, Al alternative Al scheduling yeah, yeah. and mm -hmm. usage, multi track, multi track, mm -hmm. and different things. There's several different right. things that fit in that umbrella, Absolutely. but things that would make use of the existing facilities right. to and lessen mm -hmm. the, the need to build new. Right. And like I said, I, I fully yep. understand I haven't pushed you because well, we I, have, but we have in, in Mr. Uh, Sullivan. Ms. Dr. Dr. Sullivan's Sullivan. working on it with her and I think he's putting some parents and principals and stuff like that on there too. So what they're gonna do is kind of look at and we'll probably start quite frankly in the Blackman area. We'll probably look at the in you know the elementary schools and uh, and try to look at a multi track. Now uh, just from face value now so they don't become sticker shot you will see operational costs go up oh, yes. you, know, you know but just you, you don't have sticker shock on it you know well, because it's it be all in and the wash you know right. but we just have to look at every absolutely mm -hmm. and, and it may not be the right to go but we can look at it we can look at yeah, it absolutely. it costs very little to look at yeah, it absolutely I agree with you wholeheartedly I know the legislature still are very early in session. Are we hearing anything, any movement, or any support for any of the bills we've got done? Well, <laughs> I, I'm not. I, you know, I'm not really sure. I mean, um, uh, I think the the bill, uh, the Capital Improvement Act bill, may be still moving through. I think it will look more like a grant that you can apply for. I'm not sure if it'll be uh, reoccurring, but it, it, I, I think it still has some traction. Yeah. Um, I know you're still working on your budget. Are you gonna just when you said that about grant, you mm -hmm. made me think about some of the um, security money that mm -hmm. we got. That was kind of a one-time thing. Right. Are, they're still it? they're still providing, you know. And uh, one of our, I think one of our, and we actually had a, an executive session here the other day. Uh, one of the biggest things are the truncated radios. I mean, it's mm -hmm. it's going to be, you know, we're going to have to phase them in, right. you know, because of the of the cost and right. stuff like that. Anything else? This is not exactly a report, but we'll still take a motion to accept the report. So moved. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Very good. All right, well, so you get $500 million. No. I'll never forget Mayor Burgess's uh, face, man. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you all very much. All are great partners, and we appreciate you no, so much. We appreciate much. you guys. Thank you very much. All right, is there any other business for this committee? Mm -hmm. If not, we are adjourned. Oh, Thank you.